Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. It is good to see you this morning, family. We have come to worship the one and true and living God this morning. Hallelujah. God is worthy to be praised. Just give the Lord a, a hand wave of praise this morning. If you know that God is worthy to be praised, hallelujah. Just lift up your hands and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank, thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Amen. We live to worship the one and true and living God. Hallelujah. He has held us together each and every day of our lives, and he's brought us to this point. And we just say, hallelujah. We say, thank you, Jesus, for another day, another day of worship where we could come together. Amen, amen, and amen. Family, it is good to see you this morning. Hallelujah. The, the, the third first Sunday of 2021. Amen. Amen. And as we prepare to begin worship, uh, this is Communion Sunday, so hopefully you have your communion elements ready for when we get to that portion of worship. Amen. Amen. So right now we will, uh, we will continue in worship uh, with our worship team. Sweet, sweet spirit. Spirit to come. At this time, uh, we will have our invocation by Minister Deb Deborah Yule Thompson. Let us pray. Hallelujah to the Almighty God. God, we have entered into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. And we stand in awe 
of your goodness and your mercy. And we come before you, Lord, with gratefulness and hearts that long to adore you and worship only you. Lord, may, your, may, may, may we know your presence of the Holy Spirit this morning, oh God, is with us. May all persons that are gathered here in this Zoom connection be open to your leading, be sensitive to your speaking, and alert to your calling. Lead us by your spirit this morning, O oh God. May our hearts overflow with thanksgiving and our mouths proclaim your everlasting greatness. May all that is said and done in this worship experience bring you glory. And Father, we declare this day that you are our God and we are your people. And Father, teach us as you taught your disciples, this then is how you should pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever, and ever. Amen. Amen, amen. That's right. The Lord reigns forever and ever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. We will now have our affirmation of faith uh, read by Minister Jack Thatcher. The affirmation of faith. Blessed is the one who does not walk in steps with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. Not so the wicked, they are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. Amen. Amen, amen. Thank you so much. We will now have a Lenten meditation read by Deacon Aaron Crafton II. What is Lent? A time set aside. Just as we set aside time to spiritually prepare for Christmas day, it makes sense to set aside time to prepare for the two most important days of the Christian year. Lent is a time that offers us an opportunity to come to the terms with the human condition we may spend the rest of our year running from. And it brings our need for a savior to the forefront. Like Advent, Lent is a time to open the doors of our heart a little wider and understand our Lord a little deeper. So that when Good Friday and eventually Resurrection Sabbath comes, it is not just another day at church, but an opportunity to receive the overflowing of graces God has to offer. But unlike the childlike joy associated with the season of Advent, with its eager anticipation of the precious baby Jesus, Lent is an intensely penitential time as we examine our sinful natures and return to the God we have through our own rebelliousness hurt time again and again. Lent is an opportunity to contemplate what our Lord really did for us on the cross. And it wasn't pretty. But ultimately, the purpose of Lent does not stop at sadness and despair. 
It points us to the hope of the resurrection and the day when every tear will be dried as stated in the book of Revelation chapter 21 verse 3. Although the nature of suffering is not one that offers itself to easy explanations or pat answers, the answers we seek seem to make the most sense in light of the course. There is nothing in the world, no religion, philosophy, or material comfort that offers such a powerful answer to life's toughest questions on the two slabs of wood on which our Savior died. Although we were drawn to Christianity in search of joy, it's the cross that keeps us coming back day after day, year after year. It is this time of year known as Lent that I am reminded of what Jesus did for me. When I look into the eyes of our suffering God, I am in awe. Suddenly, the complexity of our Lord, the love of our Lord, the humanity of our Lord shines through. I realize God is not just some nebulous energy source or a grandfather sitting in the clouds. He is so much more. The cross is where our faith stands when all other faiths fail. Christ's sacrifice and his subsequent resurrection are the true cruxes of the Christian faith. Without one, there would be no salvation. Without the other, no hope. This is why Good Friday and the following Resurrection Sabbath are the most important days on the Christian calendar, even more so than Christmas. Amen and amen. Praise God for that Lenten meditation. Family, we have come to our time of uh, communion. And I will begin by reading 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 34. It says, for I have received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ, eat and drink judgment on themselves. That is why many among you are weak and sick, and a number of you have fallen asleep. But if we were more discerning with regard to ourselves, we would not come under such judgment. Nevertheless, when we are judged in this way by the Lord, we are being disciplined so that we will not be finally condemned with the world. So then, my brothers and sisters, when you gather to eat, you should all eat together. Anyone who is hungry should eat something at home so that when you meet together, it may not result in judgment. And when I come, I will give further directions. The word of the Lord. We will now uh, be led through 
the reading of the church covenant, the blessings of the, the blessing of the elements and partaking together by Reverend uh, Tamara. Our church covenant reads as follows. Having been led as we believe by the spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our savior. And on a profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, we do now in the presence of God, angels, and this assembly, most solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We engage therefore by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love to strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge, holiness, and comfort, to promote its prosperity and spirituality, to sustain its worship ordinances, discipline, and doctrines, to contribute cheerfully and regularly to the support of the ministry and the expenses of the church and the relief of the poor and the spread of the gospel through all nations. We also engage to maintain family and secret devotion, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintance, to walk circumspectly in the world, to be just in our dealing, faithful in our engagements and exemplary in our deportment, to avoid all tattling, backbiting and excessive anger, to abstain from the sale and use of, the sale and use of intoxicating drinks as a beverage and to be zealous in our efforts to advance the kingdom of our savior. We further engage to watch over one another in brotherly love, to remember each other in prayer, to aid each other in sickness and distress, to cultivate Christian sympathy in feeling and courtesy in speech, to be slow to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation and mindful of the rules of our savior to secure it without delay. We moreover engage that when we remove from this place, we will as soon as possible unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principle of God's word. Let us have our elements before us. And let us ask the Lord to bless these. Let us pray. We come to you this day, dear Lord, the third first Sunday of the year 2021. And we are humbled that once again, we can come and commune together, dear God. We ask that you would take simple elements, the fruit of the vine and unleavened bread, dear Lord, and bless them. Use them for a spiritual purpose for that when we partake of these elements, we don't do it at a mindless habit, but we do it with the full acknowledgement that you loved us so much that while we were yet sinners, you sent your son, you came in flesh to die for us so we can be in an intimate relationship with you, Lord. Bless these elements, dear God. In the mighty name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. The bread symbolizes the broken body, the sacrificed body of our Lord and Savior that was given on Calvary for our salvation. Let us partake and remember. The fruit of the cup, fruit of the vine, symbolizes the shed blood of Calvary, shed blood of our Lord and Savior, given so that we could be saved, so that we can be in an intimate relationship with God, so that we could commune with God constantly throughout our lives. Let us partake and remember. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. 
Amen, amen. Yes, if it wasn't for Jesus, where would we be? We'd be nowhere. Our lives would be uh, in shambles. We would cease to exist if it wasn't for Jesus. Mm, thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your sacrifice. At this time, we will have the reading of the word. Uh, Philippians chapter 3, verses 10 through 15 by Deacon Aaron L. Craft in the second. And I continually long to know the wonders of Jesus and to experience the overflowing power of his resurrection working in me. I will be one with him in his sufferings and become like him in his death. Only then will I be able to experience complete oneness with him in his resurrection from the realm of death. I admit that I haven't yet acquired the absolute fullness that I am pursuing, but I run with passion into his abundance so that I may reach the purpose for which Christ has laid hold of me to make me his own. I don't depend on my own strength to accomplish this. However, I do have one compelling focus. I forget all of the past as I fasten my heart to the future instead. I run straight for the divine invitation of reaching the heavenly goal and gaining the victory prize through the anointing of Jesus. So let all who are fully mature have this same passion. And if anyone is not yet gripped by these desires, God will reveal it to them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will now hear from our worship team. Praise you.
strive to reach the goal of perfection. But we must recognize that we won't reach that goal in this life. We will only reach that goal when we finish our work on earth. Therefore, beloved, we must do all within our powers, power to banish complacency in our lives. Stop taking each day as just another day. Each day God gives us is a day in which we can do more work towards reaching our goal of perfection. When I was a young man in the 60s, the Consolers of Miami, Florida, popularized this song, May the works I've done speak for me. May the works I've done speak for me when I'm resting in my grave. There's nothing more to be said. May the works I've done speak for me. The faith you demonstrated, the life you lived, and the works you have done all testify to your faithfulness to your Lord and Master. But let me warn you, beloved, a lot of us can become complacent as we suffer from work fatigue, when we tire of serving the Lord in his house of worship. Too many of us slack off, slow down, become agitated at the littlest thing that don't go our way. We step back and the work goes undone. This is the epitome of being complacent. Well, beloved, we must banish complacency in our lives and our lifelong in our lifelong pursuit of perfection we must recognize there is no place in our lives for being complacent for you see complacency will prevent us from receiving our goal of perfection in the life to come. I don't want anything to keep me from receiving my crown. Remember that hymn, Must Jesus Bear the Cross Alone and All the World Go Free? No, there is a cross for everyone and there's a cross for me. The consecrated cross I'll bear till death shall set me free and then go home my crown to wear for there's a crown waiting for me. Beloved, there's a crown waiting for you. There's a crown waiting for you. There's a crown waiting for you. Do not become complacent and lose your crown. Paul further testifies that he has not reached his goal, finished his course, and received the prize. While there is breath in this body of mine, I still got work to do for the master. I still must testify. I still must evangelize. I still must strengthen my brothers and sisters in the faith. Faith. I still have to struggle. I suffer. I shed tears for my Savior's sake. Beloved, every man and every woman knows when their time here on earth is done. 
They do not attempt to cling to this life when their time is up. They have spent all of their days preparing for this moment. And they don't fear death or dread its coming. Again, I must say to you, my friends, this world has a way of trying to make us complicit in not being prepared to meet the Lord on our last day. Let me unwrap this word complacency for us at this moment. Complacency is a feeling of smug or uncritical satisfaction with oneself or one's achievements. Paul says in Romans 12, 3, For I say through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly. Beloved, everything you accomplish in this life ought to resound to God's glory. It's not because you're so intelligent. It's not because you're so smart. It's not because you're filled with so much wisdom. It's not because you are talented. It's not because you can sing. It's not because you can pray. It's not because you can do other things. It is because God has endowed you. He has given you whatever abilities you have. Don't be smug about it. Give God praise over it. Let God's name be glorified. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches over me. Beloved, you are what you are because God has been so good to you. Do not attempt to rob God of his glory. If you do, beloved, let me warn you. God will take his hands away from you. And when God takes his hands away from you, you will fall. If you fail to give God the glory, if you fail to exalt the Lord, if you fail to let the world know that this is what I am because of what God is doing within me, then, beloved, you're giving yourself over to complacency. And you will recognize at the last day, God will have the last laugh. This is why Paul teaches us that we should keep our bodies under subjection. Here's what he says. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means. When I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Every time I read this passage, 
I feel sadness in my heart. And I declare before the God I serve that I don't want to spend my life preaching and teaching and trying to show people the way. And then I myself, at the end of my life, become a castaway. It's a sad commentary for a man or woman to work all of their lives seeking to save others and not reach his goal of perfection at the end of his day. Let us banish this spirit of complacency that assaults the church and the people of God today. Years ago, I preached revival meetings in a southern state for about 20 years. There was a deacon in the church who was chairman of the deacon board. He was considered a man of doctrine. In his association, he was known as Mr. Baptist because he taught the church's doctrine with such clarity and force. And yet in his latter years, he spent his dying years fighting his pastor and church because they removed him as chairman of the deacon board. I knew this man personally. I held him in high esteem. Every time I would go there, we would have time of fellowship and talk. But at the end of his life, he spent his last days, even when he was sick, fighting. And in the end, he became entrapped by the spirit of complacency and missed his prize. In one of his intimate moments, Paul reveals to us that he has not yet obtained spiritual perfection. He had not ultimately become what God intended him to be both moral and spiritual perfection. This is what John says. He says, Beloved, now we are the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. We continuously hear preachers and teachers of religion tell us that God has a purpose for your life. It is a form of salt short-sightedness to limit God's plan for our lives to the only few days we have down here on planet Earth. And I know I've been here 73 years, but it's only a few days. Those of you who are over 90, it's only a few days, Mother Dillard. It's only a few days. We might look at it in terms of years. God looks at it in terms of days. For a day in God's sight is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is as of day. So if we just limit what we do down here and say this is what God's plan is for our lives, for what we do down here, we miss it. No, God's plan goes beyond our existence on planet Earth. God's plan for us is what he has planned for all of eternity. His plan does not stop when the undertaker comes and take your body 
away his plan is fulfilled and what the little old ladies in my home church would call in the sweet by and by because beloved we will spend more time in eternity than we ever spent in time and it serves to believe that God's plan for my life also includes what I will be doing in eternity. Let us banish the spirit of complacency that teaches that this world is all that there is to our existence. And when we are dead, we are done. The Greeks had a philosophy called Epicureanism that taught eat, drink, and be merry because tomorrow we die. Epicurus famously said, death is nothing to us. When we exist, death is not. And when death exists, we are not. Scripture tells us, and I think I would cling more to Scripture than I would to the philosopher Epicurus. And God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish <laughs> but shall have eternal life. Love it, let us strive to obtain spiritual perfection. Let us become all that God intended for us to be, both morally and spiritually. Let's work towards it. Let's not say, well, I can't be perfect down here, so I'm going to do any and all thing I want to do. No! Let's work for perfection. I know I won't make it, but I'm going to keep on striving. Hallelujah. I'm going to keep my hands on the gospel plow. I'm going to keep my eyes on the the prize and I'm not gonna let anybody turn me around Jesus laid hold of you and me when we first believed he took us into his arms and cuddled us, protected, and shielded us from all dangers. He feeds us daily, clothes us, and provides for us. He grasped me, introducing me to his power and influence over my life. I want to walk with him. I want to commune with him. I want to know him. I want to share in his sufferings. I want to obtain the resurrection from the dead. I am banishing the spirit of complacency from my life. As I embrace my Lord and my King, Jesus, the Christ wholeheartedly, I continuously tell him every day of my life, lead me, guide me along the way. For if you lead me, I cannot stray. Lord, let me walk 
each day with thee. Lead me, O oh Lord, lead me. I am weak and I need thy strength and power to help me all my weakest hour. Lead me through the darkness thy face to see. Lead me, O oh Lord, lead me. Help me tread in the paths of righteousness. Be my aid when Satan and sin oppress. I am putting all my trust in thee. Lead me, O oh Lord, lead me, lead me. Guide me along the way. For if you lead me, I shall not stray. Lord, let me walk each day with thee. Hallelujah! Lead me, O oh Lord. Lead me. Do not let these words return unto you void, eternal God. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God for the message and the messenger. That was a powerful word from the Lord. And we praise God for our, our senior pastor uh, for sharing with us what the Lord has placed on his heart. Uh, and there, there was so much in it. Uh, but one thing uh, that he said was that God's plan for us doesn't stop when the undertaker comes for our body. But God's plan for us goes on into eternity and it covers what we will be doing forever and ever and ever and ever in the kingdom of God. And the Bible says that for those who belong to Jesus, that we will rule and we will reign with Christ forever and ever. And so the, the most important question that we each have to wrestle with and come to terms with and answer is what happens to us after we die? And the answer that the, the Bible gives and what pastor has shared with us today is that if we belong to Jesus, if we surrender our lives to Jesus, if we pledge our allegiance to Jesus, then what happens after we die is that we reach perfection and we will rule and reign with Christ. And the word says, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of men and women and women, what good things the Lord has in store for those who love him. So if you are here this morning and you have heard this message, we invite you to surrender your life to Jesus. We invite you to pledge your allegiance to Jesus. We invite you to give your heart and your mind all that you are to Jesus because God loved us so much that he gave us his best. He gave us his son, Jesus, to live the perfect life, to die the perfect sacrificial death on the cross uh, so that we, our sins could be forgiven, uh, all of our faults could be reconciled and we could be brought into a right relationship with Jesus. And then he rose from the grave on the third day with all power in his hands so that we too would rise in power uh, and stand before him and hear him say, well done, my good and faithful servant. If you are here today and you want to be in a right relationship with Jesus, we invite you at this time. You can submit your information uh, in a private chat to myself 
and I will reach out to you. We'll have the deacons reach out to you. We will talk with you. We will pray with you. The Bible is clear that it is simple, that if you surrender your heart, if you bow your knee to the Lord, if you confess that you are a sinner in need of salvation and only Jesus can save you, and you say, Lord, I need you to save me. I confess my sins to you. I cannot save myself. I believe, Jesus, that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. I believe that you rose on the, from the grave on the third day with all power in your hands, and I want you to save me. The Bible is clear that those who call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Will you call and will you surrender your life to Jesus this morning? to God for all that God does for you. If you know that God has been a good God to you, just wave your hand if you know that God's been a good God to you. Uh, I, I want you to, again, put your uh, 
view on speaker view and uh, as I call some names I just want you to say I'm here and if you and if you unmute yourself and say I'm here then you'll come on speaker view so people will know who we're talking about amen, amen. this is this is this is March and they call it March Madness, but we got some people who got born in March. Amen? Amen. Wanda <laughs> Sibley, are you here? Hey, amen. Yes, yes, Pastor, I'm here. All right. Doretha Buster, say amen. That's, that's not Doretha. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> Lord's power. I'm here, Pastor. All right. Good morning. Joe Andrews. I'm here. Okay. Dimitri Met. Fleming Oliver. Mary White Porters. Take up Brother John Frey. Evita Howard. <laughs> Serena Blackman. Here. Shane Ocean Loye. I'm here. You let Clark Walker. Johnny Jones. Liza Tuck. Pettis Wilson. Shadwan Ferguson. And Dennis Cummins. Happy birthday to birthday. March birthdays. All right. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. All right. That's good. Okay. Now, uh, I don't have a list of anybody getting married in March. Uh, maybe it was too cold. But uh, anybody got married in March? Minister Shabaka. All right, Minister Shabaka. Got a couple of years. Happy anniversary. How many years? 18 years married, 19 together. 18 years. Bless you. Amen. Bless you, Minister Shabaka. I Bless love you. you. Thank you. Congratulations. Yes. Right. Thank the you. Carson, the Collier. Mr. Collier? Yes. How many years married? Nine. Nine. Nine years married. Congratulations. Awesome. All right. Thank All right. you. Thank you. Sir? Yes. Uh, 16 vivacious years. Amen. <laughs> Minister uh, I, I, I'm going to ask you one day. Uh, <laughs> Minister Tuck, I'm going to ask you one day. That <laughs> word, vivacious. <laughs> 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 all right. God bless you. And glad to have all of your special days. Amen. Uh, this afternoon, uh, we will have a, there, there will be a, a service for uh, Dion Allen's father. And that will be at 4.30 p.m. It will be a virtual uh, service uh, at John Allen's funeral home. And it's going to be broadcast on YouTube. And so we asked that we would support our minister of music. And this is her, her, her father, uh, the last of her parents. And she's lost both parents in the last 12 months or better. And so we want to remember her in our prayers. We also want to... Uh, Sister Edna Carter passed, and they're going to have her funeral at Granby's next Saturday. And I had it, but I don't have it written. I don't have it before me right now. But they're going to have a funeral at Granby's, and it's going to be limited to the amount of people who can get in. But all of us know that Sister Edna Carter uh, was a faithful member of our church. And we want to remember her family in our prayers. Uh, 
we, we also have a funeral tomorrow and it's going to be a virtual funeral. We're going to do it on Zoom. The same uh, information that you use uh, to get on worship today. And that's in, we, we're going to be uh, honoring and memorializing uh, Sister Leslie Burton. She passed away uh, a couple of weeks ago. And we're going to ask that you would, those of you who can, tomorrow at 1130, we're going to have that service on Zoom. Amen. I want to invite you tonight at 8 o'clock. Uh, we're doing a So Sin I You. Uh, we are dealing with, uh, this, this is the third uh, Sunday in, uh, in Lent. And so we, we had about 70 or 80 people last week from around the, the uh, tri-state area. And so we want you to come and share with us again. Uh, at 8 o'clock this evening. I understand Shirley Hudson is in church. Say hello to us, Shirley. Unmute yourself and say hello to us. Shirley was a former member and she lives down in, I believe it's South Carolina, if I got that right. Is that That's right? Correct. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm wonderful. Thank you. It's so good to be in, in, in service. Glad to have you this morning. I mean, yes. my members, uh, uh, Covenant Disciples, they, they they saw you as you came in. I saw oh, okay. it in the chat. Hello, Shirley. Glad to, <laughs> oh, that's so wonderful. Shirley. Glad to have you this morning. Oh, yes. Thank you. Good uh, to be here. It is time for us to give. Oh, Pastor, I just have one quick announcement. Yes. For that. Uh, family, remember today is, uh, I believe, the deadline for the Cornania newsletter submissions. So if you're writing for uh, the newsletter, uh, you can submit your, your writings to Deacon uh, Helena Asinoye and Trustee Joanne Davis. Uh, so just a reminder uh, that today, I believe, is the deadline for that. Amen. Thank you. And that brought into memory that uh, 50 sickles will be a pop-up clinic starting tomorrow for the uh, vaccination. If you're 65 and older, uh, send me an email. I will forward uh, the information to our councilwoman, uh, to uh, Sister Phyllis Shelton. Both of them called me this weekend and, and told me that uh, that will be available at 50 Sickles and so uh, if you have not gotten your shot and you're 65 and older, uh, they will be making that available this week and they want to uh, put you on the list and give you an appointment. Pastor Deaconess Eliza is asking in the chat, what is the meeting ID and passcode for the eight o'clock service tonight? It's in the... Uh, it's in the newsletter I send out every day. You'll get it again the day before the end of day. All right, but it's in every day I send out a Lenten uh, meditation and it's in there. You have to scroll down to the near the bottom. And that reminds me, we are asking us to lay aside <laughs> each day for So Send I You and we want to be able to uh, send that off. That helps us to do mission work uh, in Africa. And the day is the last Sunday that we're going to receive whatever offerings you give for, they call it Helping Houston. And so uh, we ask that you would give that today. You will find that in the giving app or online or on uh, Givelify as Texas Relief, and we ask that you would respond to that as well. It's time to give, and you have in our meeting uh, chat 
you have how you can go online to give. Let us listen to our praise team, worship team, as we prepare to give. Gracious God, our Father, we just thank you for bringing us through another week in which you have blessed us with the gift of life and have provided for our every need. Lord, we come bringing before you today our gifts and we come just giving back to you a portion of that with, with which you have blessed us with. We bring our tithes and our offerings and we ask that you would bless them, that you would multiply them, and that you would let them be used to continue to bring ministry to your people and edify your church. And these and all other things, God, we pray in the name of our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. We come now to the period in our worship when we will intercede. We will pray the prayer of intercession. This is what God says to us as we, uh, and this is the reason why we do the type of praying that we do. In the book of James, he says that uh, we ought to pray. He says that, is there any sick among you? Well, let me put it the way he puts it. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing songs. Is any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with all in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Let us prepare our hearts for prayer. 
put in the chat room those that you want us to remember in prayer. And I understand Deacon David Morrissey is in worship this morning, one of our former deacons. I think he's somewhere down in South Carolina. Worship team. of our faith. The first and the last, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending. Your people have sent up their requests this morning. Some are praying for themselves and asking for help. Others are praying for family members and asking for your assistance. Asking that you would touch, that you would heal, that you would not forsake them, but walk with them. And so, Father, I come on their behalf. 
I come as their emissary. I come approaching your throne with their requests, their petitions, their praises, their gratitudes, their thankfulness. Hallelujah. And I pray, O oh God, that you would touch each one individually right now and that you would give to each one the assurance that you've heard their cry and their supplication. We thank you for the body of Christ called Bethesda. We thank you for each covenant disciple We pray, Father, that you would bless, keep, preserve, protect, feed, clothe, shelter, Well, Father, we just thank you for all that you do. Now we lift up Jordan, the son of Sister Lee. They're going to be advocating for him on Tuesday. And Father, you know the struggle that she has gone through with our school system. Intervene. You be her and their advocate. Touch hearts. Change opinions. And Father, we'll be careful to give your name the praise, the glory, and the honor. For we ask it in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. Now, unto God who is able to keep all of us from falling and to present us faultless before God's presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. And the people of God said, Amen. You may fellowship one with the other. Amen. Therese, I sent you the link. Thank you. I saw Amen. it. Thank Have a blessed week. Amen. She bless you. Bless you. Hello. Hello. Hey, Sylvia. Good morning, Bethesda. I'm sure it's from Columbus, South Carolina. Good morning. Good morning. Love everybody. Have a great week. Good morning, everyone from South Carolina. Good morning, Have a blessed day. Enjoy your day. Enjoy your day, everyone. Have a good day, everyone. How's the family? Doing good, doing good, thanks. Mr. Tuck. Thank you, Beth. Awesome service. Hello, church family. Good morning.